to, to go further more with, with more encounters. We've got um, a big encounter that happened in 1966 in Australia in the West Hall School. Yeah, it's brilliant, this case. So uh, the, the reason why it's brilliant is there's just so many different witnesses to it. Uh, reports suggest that there's over 300 witnesses. Uh, that includes students and also the teachers. And what happened on, on this day um, back in 1966 was this disc-shaped object was seen hovering uh, just next to a power line tower right at the end of the, the children's sports field. It then began to descend and it lowered itself into this wooden reserve just be behind the, the school barrier. Uh, a lot of the school children actually hopped over this barrier to get a close look to see what was happening. Some of the, the, the witnesses said that they heard a humming sound, that there was an extreme heat that seems to be um, one of these things that, that happens around UFOs that they give off this extreme, extreme heat. heat yeah. um, it's, it's been recorded on many different sightings. And Leaving marks on the ground. That, that's another another thing, bear marks on the ground. Um, but in this, this encounter, um, it was reported by witnesses that it actually rotated and then shot off like the you know a bullet out of a gun and, and disappeared into the distance. Yeah, kind of like shot off like what, like the, the way the gimbal was. Yeah, yeah there's no house referring to there. It's just it's it's happened so many times, and and all these different encounters they do seem to have very uh, a lot of very similarities between them. One of them being that they seem to rotate uh, in the gimbal video that was re released yeah. back in 2017. Uh, by the you know the, the Pentagon, um, this video that the military craft seen um, a UFO actually rotates, and Bob Lazar, who reportedly claims that he worked on alien technology and alien spacecraft while he was at Area 51, also said that the the craft rotates and propels itself towards what whatever its destination is. So there's a lot of similarities there, and yeah. you know, with some of these reports, and um, this encounter that happened in Westall in 1966. It was a very important one as well, and it was taken seriously because the, the armed forces actually turned up at this case, and uh, the, the police as well. And it's only today, you know, many, many years later, that the um, teachers, some of the teachers have come forward and said that they were actually threatened by some of these authorities. They said that if they were to speak out and say that, you know, that this encounter was true, that this encounter happened, that their careers could actually be on the line. Just told the creep their mouth shut like everyone else <laughs> yeah, I know it's just um, as I say these encounters I don't know why we're not allowed to know the truth or, or why people aren't allowed to tell the truth but it seems to be again a, a reoccurring event that happens they're told to keep their mouth shut uh, yeah it's but not anymore the taboo is kind of getting removed it is slowly but surely the taboo starts to, uh, to, to come away so we'll see how that goes in the uh, the coming weeks and months Australia several hundred students saw an object hovering over this power line tower on their athletic field an event they vividly recall 50 years later a student came into the classroom you know oh, there's flying saucers in the in the oval there's flying saucers and everybody ran out and I remember the fear and the hysteria of all the students. I couldn't believe it because what I was seeing wasn't possible. It was vertical, horizontal, move away from us, back towards us, appear somewhere else, somewhere else. My God, you know, yeah. well, but it was exciting. It was like that and then all of a sudden it just turned on its side and I could see that it was a round disc. The children saw the disc begin to descend into this wooded reserve at the end of the school's running path. I ran towards the corner of the school, jumped the fence and ran towards where it looked as though it went down into the trees and then stopped dead because it was right in front of me on the ground. Like a disc with a slight rise in the middle. I also heard um, a low sort of a humming noise and I felt a bit of a heat coming off it as well. And it started to take off pretty well straight away. It had all bluey purple lights um, around the bottom. Don't remember seeing any windows. And it took off to about probably four or five metres in the air and then turned on its side and just went zoom straight up so fast that there's just nothing, even now, day, that could go that fast. Shortly after the object departed, the authorities converged on the school. We had Army, Air Force, police, 
lockdown, they're cordoning off the area so uh, to prevent any of us entering the area or disturbing anything. We got oh, called to assembly, the headmaster said, you have not seen this, yeah, you well. do not talk about it, you'll be in trouble if you do. For the first time ever, the school science teacher agreed to describe what he saw that day, providing we concealed his identity. It was not a mirage, there was something physical in the sky, it was silver, it could hover, it could move slowly, it could move very rapidly. Eventually it, it uh, moved away to the other side of the oval and down behind some pine trees. I was not then, nor ever have been, able to use my knowledge of the world, nor my scientific training, to, to uh, provide a rational explanation. What he said next sheds light on why the school's staff have remained silent all these years. I was a knock on the door one night. Two older men, one in uniform, asked for my description of what I'd seen. I was then told that I hadn't seen anything, that um, I'd made it all up, possibly because I was drunk, and that they would have to report that fact to the education department and I would lose my job. After that, I was told that I would be prosecuted under the Official Secrets Act, and I was told that um, there wasn't anything there when I knew there was, uh, and that I had to keep quiet about it. Why did I have to keep quiet? Another strange yeah. one that, that that happened during the actual Westall encounter in 1966, just to go back to it, um, th there was a small town nearby, it's called uh, Baldwin, and uh, this was just four days prior to that incident, an engineer come forward and said that he spotted um, an aircraft in the sky, it was a clear day, and he actually took a photograph of this, um, th this craft, and it's on a Polaroid picture, which is very, very hard and difficult to, to fake and fraud. Um, it's shown in a phenomenal movie, and I'm going to get Niall here. He's the man behind all this. He's the guy who puts all this together and I puts the edits. So he's going to pull that photograph up for you. He can put it up <laughs> in the edits. Yeah.